We're going to get started. Thank you. My name is Tony Marino. I'm the Winthrop Town Manager. I get the honor of uh, kicking this event off, even though we're in East Boston. It's all right. Uh, I want to point out if we did it over at the Mary Ke Kelly Pavilion, it would have been a little short a walk, but that's all right. Uh, given the temps, it's not too bad. But I do get the honor of being out here today um, and introducing our next speaker. Uh, we're very happy to be here. Uh, this march is crucial to the, uh, the local infrastructure, the local uh, ecological uh, you know, benefits here. Uh, we've certainly got a lot of grant applications coming up in the future, so we're excited to have the governor here. And without further ado, I am going to pass this off to Governor Maura Healy. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I know it's um, I know it's a little bit nippy, but it's also uh, super, super exciting to to be here and really appreciate uh, your comments, Tony. It's uh, it's absolutely the case that uh, that this stuff is super important, and we're here today to uh, to announce it's not a new program, but importantly, it's a new launch of a new and improved program that's going to make a real difference in communities all around the Commonwealth. And so we're going to hear more about that. But I want to begin. Uh, by acknowledging my uh, terrific uh, colleagues in, in government. We're lucky to have Representative Adrian Madero here, Representative Jessica Janino here, Representative Def Jeff Turco here, thank you, um, as well as members of the uh, City Council who are here as well. Um, Hannah Belcher, Stephen Ruggiero, uh, Joe Allo is here as well, right? Um, and from our team in the uh, administration, we have our Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretary, Rebecca Tepper, our Undersecretary, Maria Balloon, is also here. Delighted to see Maria. And we'll be hearing shortly from Daria Mattis, uh, North Suffolk Office of Resilience and Sustainability, as well as Catherine Pitamani of the Mystic River Watershed Association. We also have Kara Runston, Director of the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, and her hardworking team of, of MVP liaisons, project managers out there. So it's terrific. It's, it's, uh, it's great. So, um, so this, here's what this is about. We're here at Bell Island Marsh to celebrate, well, Earth Week. Um, we're not just celebrating Earth Day. We're celebrating Earth Week and out and about around the state to talk about some of the important work that our administration is doing. That includes this MVP 2.0 uh, relaunch. So MVP is the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. It's our state's flagship climate resiliency program. We call it a relaunch, um, MVP 2.0, because this effort now is much more focused on community engagement. And that's why we're really, really happy to have so many great community partners here. Um, with more community participation, we'll get a greater focus on equity and actually meeting people and communities where they are and meeting residents where they are. MVP is about bringing people together to tackle one of our states, one of our country's greatest challenges, and that is the unique ways that the climate crisis is impacting every aspect of our life. Um, as of today, 349 of 351 cities and towns We'll work on, the, uh, on two of them. But 349 of uh, 351 have enrolled in this program and have already developed an MVP plan, a proposal, a program. And that's going to allow them to tap into $100 million over the next five years. It's a substantial investment in our communities. Of course, every community looks different. Here uh, at Belle Isle, you'll see that uh, there's going to be particular focus on studying some of the solutions to reduce flooding, to preserve this beautiful space and, and protect the habitat. Other parts of the, uh, the state will look different. Western Mass, you'll see co communities coming together to talk about local culverts and how to deal with states of disrepair. Uh, up in the Merrimack Valley, residents, uh, I think about in Lowell, are, are combating the issue of, of rising urban temperatures and, and what we need to do and solve for there. So the way this program works is that we'll have a team of regional MVP coordinators working directly with communities on preparation for the impacts of climate change. And it's super exciting to see communities coming together, working with the state, uh, working with other stakeholders, 
grassroots advocates and organizers and organizations all join together in common purpose for what is an incredibly important common good. So thrilled to kick it off today. Um, sorry about the wind um, and uh, and the chill here, but hey, it's uh, it's it's super super exciting what this what this really represents. And I've said for a while that our climate crisis is uh, indeed our greatest challenge, but I also believe for Massachusetts, our greatest opportunity. It's why we've invested so much in our proposed uh, budget to the legislature um, and why we've really, really done some things that are unique, including establishing the country's first climate chief to sit atop all secretariats and drive that agenda. Um, Secretary Tepper has created a number of important positions that, again, meet the moment, more direct engagement with community, more direct engagement with vulnerable communities, and uh, with much more of a, an equity focus. We're also doing a lot, as you know, to, um, to think about ways we can work regionally on some of our energy needs and uh, do what we need to do in, in helping us uh, build out infrastructure and working together to move us uh, uh, closer and faster to uh, renewables and away from fossil fuels. With that, I want to turn it over to the person I put in charge uh, of, of all of this. Uh, she's our terrific Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper. Thank you, Governor. I just wanted to introduce a couple members of my team here today. Um, Under Secretary Catherine Antos, who is our Under Secretary of, what are we calling you? Climate. Decarbonization and Resilience. Decarbonization and Resilience. It's a new position, um, and we are just thrilled to, to have her here. Also here is Maria Blen Power, who is also in, in a new position, uh, which is Under Secretary of Environmental Justice and Equity. And I think these two positions show you what the emphasis of our team is, equity and combating the climate crisis. And this project here is so exciting because it's exactly the kind of thing that we are um, hoping to uh, have happen all over the state. Um, I was just talking to Steve Long, who was telling me that the history of this program, which I, which I didn't realize started in 2017 with a uh, collaboration with the Nature Conservancy. Um, so it's been a program that's around a long time, so it, it, is, it is in need of a little um, boost. Um, I think we're ready to go on to a new phase of the, of the program. Um, so I think it's particularly fitting that we are announcing this, pro, this new 2.0 uh, part of the program here because of the collaboration on, on this project um, and what we envision um, for the program. The town of Winthrop and the cities of Boston and Revere worked with regional and local partners to study the Belle Isle Marsh and how to enhance coastal flood resilience and safeguard this important habitat, which is was just beautiful. I encourage everybody afterwards to go walk um, this way down this thing. I saw all sorts of good um, egrets and um, birds this morning. Birds. I don't know what they were, but they were birds. <laughs> Not quite on the, um, the bird watching front yet. Um, but you know, we know that climate doesn't care about town lines um, or state borders. So state action means little without the partnership of our local communities. This program, 2.0, MBT 2.0, will continue to spur these types of local partnerships across Massachusetts and aid communities in moving from planning to action. You know, every year we all know we're experiencing more extreme weather. Um, today is not an example of that, it's just cold. Um, but from prolonged critical heat waves and droughts to heavy downpours and flooding. And we must take a proactive approach to invest in our mitigation strategies and resilience efforts. That's why this program has done so well. The MVP program has served as a testing ground for innovative projects. Just across the creek in the city of Chelsea, they're creating a cool block to combat urban heat island effects. In air, they're installing a pocket forest. And in the western part of the state, teens in Lenox are being trained to conduct culvert assessments. These cities and towns are putting motivation into action and we're building stronger and more resilient communities because of it. 
Now it's time for the successful program to evolve. Like our administration, MVP 2.0 is focused on environmental justice communities and building social, economic, and ecological resilience. Too often, our low-income communities of color bear the burden of climate harms despite contributing the least. With MVP 2.0, we're bringing them to the table. Pilot communities will be given the resources to build a team of members with environmental justice expertise, and they'll have the tools to move the plans forward. Communities will receive guidance and, and funding for innovative training on climate resilience, best practices, equity, and environmental justice. They'll also receive technical assistance, including gaining access to data from similar projects to help implement plans. Sorry. Got a page is stuck here. There we go. To support these efforts, um, EEA, our agency, is launching a new web-based tool uh, in the coming weeks. It will include data and case studies for those participating in the program to understand the impacts of climate hazards like heat and flooding on communities' housing, food, and supply. It will also help us understand who in the community will be most impacted by these changes. The tool and the MVP 2.0 are informed by the Massachusetts Climate Change Assessment released in December. As, the, as you all know, that assessment conducted a statewide analysis detailing how people, environments, and infrastructure may be affected by climate change and related hazards through the end of the century. We have an unprecedented opportunity to position Massachusetts as a global leader in climate change mitigation and adaptation. So I'm really proud to say that we have a climate champion in the State House with our governor. As you know, Governor Healy is committed to protecting our communities from climate harm, as well as harnessing the economic and potential of the climate crisis to create jobs and grow our economy. So I want to thank all the municipal staff, community members, and regional organizations that have supported this program over the years and helped it grow to what it is today. And thanks to the MVP staff. I think some of them are here. Maybe Yay. if you guys could. Yay. And consultant team who worked hard to integrate the stakeholder feedback into this new program. Our administration is committed to continuing this partnership with our local communities to elevate our work and provide the necessary funding. And we look forward to reviewing applications that are coming in right now um, for this new pilot program. So now I'd like to introduce uh, Catherine Pita Pitamonti, the Ecological Resilient Manager at the Mystic River Watershed Association. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Catherine Pitamonti. I'm with the Mystic River Watershed Association. and. Um, you know, I'm up here speaking, but I'm really speaking on behalf of a whole host of really awesome stakeholders. Um, so shout out right off the bat to Friends of Belle Isle Marsh. If you all want to wave and say hi, the marsh would not even be here in the first place. It wouldn't have been preserved without you. So thank you. Um, so welcome to Belle Isle Marsh. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it's the largest remaining salt marsh in Boston. It's home to over 200 species of birds. Uh, about a dozen of which are listed and includes the infamous salt marsh sparrow. Uh, for those of you who don't know the salt marsh sparrow, number one, talk to Sean Riley. But number two, uh, it's a small bird that will only nest on the top of salt marsh grasses. So as those king tides get higher and as those coastal storms get more frequent, those nests are getting washed out and the numbers are declining and the bird will likely be extinct within a number of years. Um, so the effects of climate change are not, you know, happening way out there. They're happening here. They're happening now. Um, also, shout out to Sean. Some of the, you know, top research in the state that's happening on the salt marsh sparrow is happening here at Belle Isle. Um, and so these effects are not only being felt by uh, the, the birds and the wildlife here. They're also being felt by the neighboring communities. So the environmental justice communities of East Boston and Revere, also folks over in Winthrop. 
Um, so you all probably got here today on Bennington Street, right? You either drove or maybe you took the blue line in. So as you turned into the reservation right there where Boston kind of meets Revere um, is a big flood pathway. And already we're, you know, again, with those more frequent coastal storms, seeing significant flooding on Bennington Street and the blue line. And so there's, you know, this is really affecting critical infrastructure. So there's Bennington Street as an evacuation route. There's the blue line, which was the one line that during the pandemic didn't really see a dip in ridership. And then right around the corner, kind of back there, is the Orion Heights maintenance facility for the MBTA. So some of these bigger coastal storms are also starting to affect the maintenance facility. And when that equipment gets salt water in there, it affects the entire line. Um, so again, with you know the salt marsh sparrow kind of being that canary in the coal mine, you know we're we're seeing the effects now and and immediately. Um, that said, there's a lot of really great work being done by a lot of really great people here. So the work is is trying to figure out how do we protect communities while also protecting the marsh. And it sounds simple, um, but it's not. And it takes a lot of really creative thinking and a lot of really close collaboration, um, which is happening. So I just want to, you know, do some shout outs here. So I mentioned Friends of Belle Isle. Um, I think we meet probably weekly. Uh, TNC, the Nature Conservancy is also here. Um, let's see, obviously DCR is involved at, at every step of the way and are great partners. Uh, we also have a monthly meeting with all the municipalities and state agencies that own either own the marsh or the abutting land. So again, the idea that when it floods, you know, that water does not respect jurisdictional boundaries. So there's a, a real significant need for this collaboration. So shout out to Winthrop, Boston, and Revere. So El, Kat, and Rachel, I know you're all here. Shout out to DCR again, Celeste and Sean and Sarah. Um, shout out to MassDOT and MBTA for um, all your great collaboration. Um, also want to shout out to the community advisory group, which the Friends of Belle Isle, Con and Heather, and a whole host of other folks um, are convening. So this is a group of 10 residents, um, a lot of youth. So I think actually the reason they're not here today is because they are in school. Um, so the role of this group is to make sure that information is getting out into the communities and then input is coming back in and informing the planning process. Um, and finally, a huge shout out to the MVP team. So Carolyn, I don't know where you are, but you're fantastic to work with. Michelle as well. Kara, honestly, the entire team. And obviously, we're super grateful for the financial support. Like, this work could not happen without you. Um, but I'm also really grateful for your willingness to, or not even willingness, but excitement to really be thought partners in this work to help us digest those lessons learned and continue to do better. Um, so thank you everybody who makes this work possible. Thank you Secretary Tepper and Governor Healy and um, I'll turn it over to Daria now. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Um, thank you so much to the MVP team for inviting me to speak this morning. Uh, my name is Daria Mattis, and I'm the Resilience Manager with the North Suffolk Office of Resilience and Sustainability, um, which is a regional office that supports the cities of Chelsea and Revere and the town of Winthrop in their climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts. Um, we work both regionally and within each municipality um, to ensure that our region's residents will be prepared for the impacts of climate change while recognizing and working to address existing disparities by keeping equity and environmental justice at the center of our work. Part, as part of my work with Winthrop and Revere, I've supported the project here at Belle Isle Marsh since 2021, participating in monthly stakeholder meetings and coordinating with both Revere and Winthrop on their involvement in the project. Most re more recently, both Winthrop and Revere, along with East Boston, have identified priority projects to pursue that would reduce flooding and preserve marsh habitat. And I'm working to support municipal staff in each community to pursue additional support for making these projects a reality. As a planner focused specifically on climate resilience, I really can't imagine what my, my work would look like without the MVP program. While our climate um, resilience efforts are supported by a range of agencies, they tend to connect back to the initial MVP plans that the three communities developed in 2018 and 2019 and many have received direct support from MVP. 
in Chelsea, the Island and River Flood Resilience Project, which spans both Chelsea and Everett, is entering the implementation phase and will protect food distribution businesses that provide produce to much of New England from flooding when, it, when it's complete. In Revere, MVP has supported a two-year effort to bring together the five communities in the Saugus Pines River watershed to identify flood pathways and possible solutions. And Winthrop has, has led this initiative here at Belle Isle Marsh, convening stakeholders um, to identify solutions to flooding. Um, our regional office is currently conducting an MVP-supported effort to bring together municipal de departments and community-based organizations to work together more formally on emergency preparedness and social resilience. Throughout these and other efforts, our community's MVP plans have helped to identify priority projects and make the case for specific resilience measures. MVP 2.0 will continue to provide this type of support and guidance while also ensuring that a more diverse mix of voices is represented in the planning and prioritization process. Um, and I'm really excited to see how the 2.0 process unfolds in the North Suffolk region. Um, so i um, very excited for this program um, and very appreciative to everybody here who made it possible. Um, thank you so much. Um, we're happy to take some questions if there are any related to this. If you got what you need, it's good stuff. Um, off topic, we'll get hit in a minute though. Um, if there are no questions related to this project, let's have uh, let's have all the Belle Isle friends come up for a picture here. So everybody who helped make all this possible. <laughs> 